All right, uh, so thank you, Liza, and our amazing panelists. So on to our next session, um, because we all love data. Uh, will be a panel on our latest research findings on migrants who have arrived in New York City. We are honored to have guests with lived experience. Hello? <laughs> with lived experience, who will share their experience during a conversation with Dr. Camilla Grip, a trained ethnographic researcher. Daniel Farrell, our C uh, HELP's chief operating officer, is unable to be with us today. Um, but stepping in for him is HELP's associate VP of research, Ashwin Perlukar. To get us started, I am pleased to introduce Marian uh, Schretzman. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. I want to start by thank, thanking HELP for organizing this panel. Right? As you know, it's not every day that we have the opportunity to listen to the voice of impacted communities. It's not every day that people with lived experience whom we're actually uh, designing, implementing, and thinking about all the policies and services that we have been here discussing. Um, people who are impacted by them and people who are serving. It's not every day that we have the opportunity to bring them into spaces like this, to have them, uh, to give them a seat on the table and to really listen to their concerns, their voice, their experiences. So this panel, you know, not to, um, not to think any less of Marianne and Ashrin, but uh, it's really about the three women sitting here to my right. But we will start with Marianne and Ashrin, so then we can give uh, more time to these three ladies to speak, and they are gonna be speaking in Spanish. So we have a wonderful translator here with us as well, who's gonna be helping us with that part of the discussion. So as uh, Samantha said, my name is Camilla Grip. I'm a research evaluation and learning officer at the Mother Cabrini Health Foundation. Uh, Mother Cabrini works to ensure that everyone in New York is able to live a healthy life. Everyone, regardless of their place of birth, of their place of origin. In 2023, we made over $180 million in grants to organizations who are uh, direct services providers, providers who are working to address the social determinants of health. Of this, over $180 million, about 11%, of our grants were primarily serving the immigrant population, including the newcomers. And these grants um, address or cover services that include housing, legal assistance, uh, English proficiency, training, uh, workforce development, and a range of other um, services that are much needed and that we're gonna be talking about or continue talking about uh, today. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce Marianne. Uh, if I'm able to say everyone's names in this panel correctly today, I think I'm admitted to the new school course on immigration that Dr. Kalergis <laughs> mentioned. Uh, that's the test. So Marianne Schretzerman, who is executive director of the New York City Center for Innovation through Data Intelligence, is gonna start off by telling us a little bit about uh, what her office does and her thoughts on the importance of this panel and about uh, highlighting the lived experience of people we're serving. Thank you very much. And um, thank you all. It's so great. We've had the opportunity to meet with families from all of you, and we can't thank you enough for coming and sharing your experiences and your hope and your strength. And it's been as one of the family members have said, it's been a harrowing experience. And I love that the Center of Innovation through Data Intelligence, which is housed at the mayor's office, that is an integrated data center, is on the panel with hearing voices from the families, because that is what we strive for, is to make sure that when we're discussing data, that we, discuss, we realize we're discussing people and that the data that we are giving you and telling you the numbers, that, the, of, that it's just not numbers on a paper, that what's behind this are people. 
and we've had some really lively discussions since Friday night in preparing for the panel. And you will hear the harrowing stories of these families who are from Colombia, Peru, and Venezuela. And um, I think it's really important in our data analysis and consideration of our policies to hear directly from the folks who are experiencing what they're experiencing. And it was interesting because the families this morning were discussing whether or not they had to have a common theme. And it was, no, you have to have what your experience is. You all have a unique experience. Share what you feel comfortable. Share your experience and, and go for it. But um, we don't have to put it into some kind of commonality or theme. We just have to be and hear what it is that you've experienced so that we can address those issues. And I really employ, implore all of us not to lose touch of those um, who are coming into our city and their different experiences. And so I wanted to just mention two points. One is that, and the commissioner mentioned it this morning, that people are different and the reasons for homelessness are different. When, when I was at Homeless Services, much of the reasons that we looked at were from families and individuals. And for families, we always thought of it as an economic problem in terms of that you couldn't afford rent. And that is st still true, as we've heard today. Housing affordability is a big, big issue. And on the adult side, it often was around jobs and health issues and mental health and substance use issues. And that's how we framed our programs and did our work as well as what we've heard this morning about how we developed the shelter system through the legal process. But we also came to the process from a social work process and designed services for the people who we were attempting to help. And I think that's, we're also now looking at that and going back to that and saying, well, what are these reasons? The reasons are different, and so therefore the response is different. And I think that's the old social work 101, meet the clients where they're at, and design programs that are actually going to help the folks where they're at. And so it's important to hear the client voices to be able to do that and to be responsive. And so that's what we strive for at CIDI, to be able to make sure that when we're putting out data and numbers, that it's with the context of what's actually going on with the people themselves. And I just um, also, the second point really I wanted to say that, and I think this morning's uh, was just a brilliant discussion on all, every, each and every one of the panels and a couple of things that came up on those panels and thinking about how the city has these shotgun weddings with the advocates. And I, I thought that's an interesting point of view. And I think we're now at a point of view of that there's a lot of complexity in our compassionate response. And that in that complexity of that response, um, we have to take what has happened in the past and figure out what's working today and what needs to be adapted and adjusted and how do we do that. And we can't do that alone and we have to reinvent how we're going to address and design a new system for different people and new people coming into our city and how we're going to deal with that is different than what we've done in the past but we should learn from our past uh, because we certainly are a part of our past. So with that, I wanted to frame that um, and wanted to also say that with the families, I, I, I'm just really touched at how much trauma some of the families have gone through and their resiliency. Uh, it, it's really remarkable of how much people have had to give up to come here. And I think in our everyday world, we don't realize how much people gave up to cross that border. And that's really something that when we're thinking about working with families as a con you know, learning about what's happening in our geopolitical world, it's really important to help us to 
know how to strategize so that we're taking that piece of that car th their courage, but also their trauma of getting here and what that has ha how that has happened. And as somebody said, what is it going to look like in five years? That and I think of other groups that when we have community and we have support, then we're able to be resilient. And how do we structure so that we can have the support from the staff point of view, that staff are supported, that the people are supported, and the, uh, the groups are supported so that we do have these supports. I, I lost my little piece, but I wanted to also say something about the unique way, places where people are coming from. Some folks are coming from rural places, other people are coming from city places. And this, so it's not, when we were thinking this morning and discussing about the federal government, the state government, and the city government, I was thinking how many of the families are coming from rural, rural families, cities, and uh, there's also a differences in these cultures and differences in languages and differences in classes that we really have to start to think through and address as well. But I wanted to just give a shout out and a thanks for having the opportunity to listen to you. And uh, I know it will be hard. There's an interpretation service. So how we're going to work it is the families will talk and the person will interpret all of what's going on. So you'll hear. And we've asked the families to tell us how, th how they got here, what happened, what was helpful, and what do they want to say to an audience that can make a difference and can respond to, on a bigger level, uh, their needs. So I'll turn it over to my colleague here, and uh, you'll, you'll take us. Yeah, so we're going to have uh, Ashwin speak a little bit about a survey that HELP has conducted, or more than one, right, about surveys that have been conducted and will uh, give us a little a glimpse on the characteristics of people who are uh, being served by the shelters and also it will give us uh, some pointers on their needs. And then we're gonna hear from uh, the three women here. But so we're, I think f in the interest of time, maybe we'll just have the translator help us with the questions after Ashwin speaks, is that okay? Okay, so let's do that because we know translation takes some time. Ashwin? Sure. So uh, I'll spend about five minutes or so um, discussing some of these findings uh, very briefly. Just to open, though, I'd like to uh, begin with a quote. Um, and the quote goes like this. Through this golden door, under the gaze of that mother of exiles have come millions of men and women. These families came here to work. Others came to America in different ways, from other lands, under different, often harrowing conditions. But this place symbolizes what they all managed to build, no matter where they came from, or how they came, or how much they suffered. They brought with them courage, ambition, and the values of family, neighborhood, work, peace, and freedom. Uh, so before I move on, just any guesses on, on who, who this would be attributed to, who said this? Uh, okay, it was Ronald Reagan uh, in, <laughs> in uh, 1981, not very far from here, of course referencing Statue of Liberty. Um, and of course we know that today it's a very different narrative that's framed at the national level. Um, the, the narrative has framed the uh, crisis, immigration crisis as an invasion, and there is little doubt that the entrance of three million people into the U.S. from the southern border last year alone represents a crisis. But there are also indications that it is a crisis of deprivation in which people leave their homes under such harrowing conditions and come to the United States and New York City to meet basic human needs, uh, a safe and secure place to live, for example, and an opportunity to realize a better future for oneself and one's family. Fundamentally, our research bears this out. Uh, in October 2022, we surveyed 65 people in our shel family shelters, which at that time was about 40% of adults in those shelters, to understand 
where they came from, under what conditions they left their countries, and what their needs were, particularly urgent needs. Very briefly, 44% were from Honduras, 18% were from Venezuela, 11% were from Colombia, and the remaining were from various countries, eight countries, including Mexico, Ecuador, and Nicaragua. Importantly, 73% of these respondents met the federal defini definition for refugee status, which enables uh, somebody coming to the United States to apply, officially apply for asylum. Um, and 70% reported having endured hunger on their journeys from their home countries to New York. However, at the same time, we also saw that there were a high share of respondents with employable skills and who had access to essential services from their sites, uh, the family sites uh, that, that help uh, manages. Uh, at that time, 30% uh, were employed at the time of this survey. 62% uh, had a high school degree and 22% had some college education and all children of 87% of those respondents were enrolled in New York City school. As far as urgent needs, uh, one third by that time had applied for asylum and nearly half, 48% reported that their most urgent need was legal aid to process asylum requests. We can also contextualize this urgency uh, based on the family profiles, 92% were uh, female-headed, uh, and 50%, 58% had at least two children living with them in the shelter. Uh, and half of these women were under the age of 35, so a young uh, population. Um, next, we wanted to um, understand over time how these needs were met. Uh, this was especially so since uh, policies were developing rapidly and often in, in, in conflict with each other. Very briefly, the evolving pro policy responses over this time until, let's say, about a few months ago, uh, the increase of emergency aid from the Adams administration to fund new shelters and expand services. Second, city council uh, passed new laws which uh, essentially expanded access to housing vouchers for shelter clients. Um, and third, in the spring, the CDC Title 42 order expired, which of course was a COVID-19 measure that are authorized uh, border officials to expel migrants for the pandemic protection. Lastly, uh, the Adams administration attempted to cur curtail the city's right to shelter mandate, and that continues uh, as we speak. Um, so at that time, what we saw was that the need uh, potentially increased, in the sense that 91% uh, met the definition of a refugee, half at that time had applied for asylum, and the employment rate increased to 42%. Uh, a very high share of persons were receiving uh, direct serv ser services directly from their shelters, 93% uh, physical health care, 80% um, information on legal services, and 73% mental health care from their shelter directly, but they were also accessing the city services that came out of the emergency funding. 40% had it access legal assistance, free legal assistance by volunteer attorneys upon arriving in New York, and 65% had received critical services at the city's asylum seeker navigation center. I'll finish here by saying that what we tried then, based on this information, was to understand the factors that were associated with asylum applications. The reason being that we take asylum applications as an indication of being recognized by a formal pathway to housing stability, which is, of course is the major outcome right, that we want to see for all of our clients, but in this particular context, the very complex needs of migrants. So we used a statistical model to identify the effect that all of the survey questions had on the probability of having applied for asylum. We found two uh, significant relationships. Migrants were more likely to apply for asylum under uh, these two conditions. If they had been detained by ICE or CBP, that's Customs and Border Patrol officials. And secondly, if they had received free legal assistance upon arriving in New York City. This indicated to us uh, the need for policies that encourage city officials to work with housing and legal service providers on three fronts that broadly pertain to uh, the intake assessment and immediate um, service referral stages. First, identifying the causes of migration, causes of migration, sorry, immediately to then ascertain asylum eligibility and then to dedicate legal resources to those 
application processes for those groups. Second, identifying the extent to which migrants had been detained by border officials, had received legal assistance to, upon entering New York, and had applied for asylum before or after entering New York to then direct the appropriate resources towards the completion of asylum applications in both conditions. And lastly, having identified who has begun or can immediately start the asylum application process, this may then better help direct employment, food, healthcare, childcare, and education services to both asylum applicant and non-asylum applicant populations, including the undocumented population that was discussed previously. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ashwin. And as, as Marianne said, right, it's very important to really ground us in the experiences. Uh, and hearing, it's very important to hear people when they're talking from their perspective about all the things that Ashwin has mentioned, right? Uh, when we talk about uh, population level data, sometimes we lose sight of the human experience, the human suffering that is behind those numbers, right? And to avoid that is the reason why we're here with our three, three guest speakers. Uh, we have, um, let me also introduce our translator, Ms. Almonte, who is gonna help me here with this and I'll try to pace myself uh, and I'll ask our speakers too to remember that we have to make pauses to give Ms. Almonte an opportunity to translate and our three guest speakers, and they gave me permission to address them by their first names to make it easier on the pronunciation side here. Uh, we have uh, Lucy from Venezuela. We have Griselda, who came from Colombia. And we have Vanessa, who came from Peru. Uh, all <laughs> They all came with their families. Uh, they faced different circumstances. They faced different journeys to get here. And they've been experiencing uh, common challenges, but also uh, marked by their own experiences. Right? And in preparation for this panel, I asked them because I really wanted them to focus on what they think was most important. I just gave them three broad questions because I didn't want to direct them to what we think is most important, right? So I asked them to think about three things. What was most challenging uh, in terms of the help they needed once they got here? What they found was truly a barrier, was a challenge. What they found was most helpful and they appreciated to receive in terms of, in terms of help. And for us to keep moving things forward and keep having these conversations and to better serve people who are here in our shelters and people who will be coming to New York City in the future, what should we be thinking about in terms of how best help them settle and establish a livelihood, move into more permanent housing, and build a livelihood for themselves and their families? So these were my three broad questions. And before giving them an opportunity to speak about this, I just want to give them a chance to introduce themselves. And they're going to tell us as much as they feel comfortable uh, telling us about their journeys. Maybe we will start with Lucy. Eh, mi nombre es Lucy Varela, mi familia está compuesta por cinco personas, mis tres hijos, mi esposo y yo. My name is Lucy Varela, my family composition is of five, my husband and my three kids. Eh, nuestra travesía fue por la selva, eh, tuvimos muchos acontecimientos. Eh, observamos muchos muertos, pero más a, aún así igualito decidimos venirnos hasta acá. We, ch we had the opportunity to travel through the jungle to get here. It was a very difficult travesty. We saw dead bodies. Um, it was very difficult, but still we made the decision to cross over 
to this country. Debido a la situación económica que vivía mi país, este, tomamos esa decisión, dejamos nuestros familiares allá en Venezuela y hoy día estamos acá. Este, la esperanza en cuando llegamos acá a Nueva York fue que este, le íbamos a brindar un nuevo futuro a, a nuestros hijos. Okay. We decided to leave Venezuela because of the hardship and the difficulties that we were facing. Um, we decided to come here to New York. Uh, we left family behind, but we decided that we needed to come over here to create a better future for our kids. Um, este, el estar acá nos da esperanza a, a trabajar, a brindarles un nuevo futuro en cuanto a la universidad, a nuestros hijos, a ofrecerles lo que nosotros no pudimos obtener allá. Y esto, darle, darles a entender que no todos somos iguales, sino que tenemos la capacidad de aprender. Y si no, mírenos acá, llegamos. Fue difícil la travesía, pero hoy día estamos aquí. Somos testimonio vivo de que primeramente existe un Dios que nos acompañó y, y estamos aquí. No porque seamos más fuertes que otros, sino porque es decisión de Él, de Dios, que estemos acá. Uy, se me fue todo ya. Um. Se me fue todo. We made it here. We well, after we got here, we have the hope and the resilience to. We have the opportunity to work, and we want to learn, and we have, want to have the ability to provide a better education as far as college to our kids and to show our kids that there is a possibilities and a better future than the one we had back home. To be able to give that to them is very important. Um, and we want to also show them that everybody is not the same, although there's a lot of, you know, back talk on certain people where everybody's not the same. We're here to work, we're here to build a future. Um, the, the journey over here was very difficult, but thank God we made it and uh, everything is possible because of God. Este, una de las preguntas que nos habían realizado era este, si, si existía alguna limitación y este, como bien dije no hay limitación para nosotros porque lo logramos, somos testimonio vivo de que estamos aquí y lo que sí es que el idioma, el idioma es muy difícil pero no, no es imposible, nosotros le pedimos la oportunidad verdaderamente que, que nos ayuden con el idioma. Um, one of the questions that we got was, what are the limitations that we now, what are the barriers that we're facing now? One of the barriers is definitely language. We would like some assistance or workshop to, so that we can be able to learn and perfect and that will be able to open us more doors as to far as um, getting able to, being able to be employed and things like that. Mm. A nosotros los venezolanos nos caracteriza que somos humildes, somos hermanos, nosotros ofrecemos esa hermandad y sí puede existir la, la xenofobia, pero denos la oportunidad de, de demostrarles de que no todos somos iguales. Venimos a trabajar, tenemos propósito, tenemos visión de que el día de mañana puede ser el, mucho mejor que, el, que lo que vivimos en el pasado y... Being from Colombia, uh, being from Venezuela, us Venezuelans, we are be known from being humble, from being having a brotherhood. We just want to be able to be given a chance so that we can show you that we are here to work. We are here to to give the best that we can. Um, we want to be able to change, and we need you guys' help to be able to change and make it a better world. 
Eh, la tercera pregunta que nos habían realizado era que, qué proponíamos. Y mi opinión es como para ayuda a, a mi persona y a mis demás compatriotas que vienen en camino, que puedan llegar, es que, que nos dejen como enseñarles proyectos. Nosotros somos capaces de aprender, somos capaces de, de, de mejorar si tenemos que mejorar algo y este, deberíamos como de, de proyectar este, cambios en el sentido de si nos ayudarían con, con los estudios, nosotros los, los mayores los estudios, eh, de seguir con el, el idioma, de este, si tenemos un propósito de negocio, somos emprendedores, nos caracterizamos por empre porque somos emprendedores y este, si tenemos que plantear un negocio, cualquier cosa, nosotros se lo, se lo haríamos saber. La tercera pregunta. La tercera pregunta era que, que, que proponíamos. Ok, um, so the third question was, what do they um, need to move forward? So, her answer was, um, to, in her opinion, they need more workshops where they are able to learn a certain skill set or certification that can open doors for people like her that are here now and for people that are on their way here as well. Um, uh, they come from different backgrounds where they learn different skill sets and they'll be able to perfect it and use it so that they can be able to create businesses as well. They want, they came here to work and they want to create businesses and a better future for everybody that, that's here now and for the ones that are to come. Sin más nada que agregar, gracias por la oportunidad y gracias por darme la bienvenida aquí en su país. Son, son, no, no todos son los, no, o sea, tenemos la, no todos nos expresan esa xenofobia, sino que muchas personas nos han tratado muy bien. Gracias por, por el techo donde vivimos, por el alimento, gracias por los estudios a nuestros hijos, gracias por por el idioma que se le está enseñando a nuestros hijos y queremos es trabajar. No todos somos iguales. Denos la oportunidad. Uh, with nothing else to say, I want to thank you guys for hearing me out. Um, I want to thank you guys for receiving me in your country. Um, thank, I want to thank you for being able to provide a roof over my head and my family for food, for education, for us, and also for my kids. I just want to be given an opportunity to show that I came here to work and that I want to succeed. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lucy, for sharing uh, your perspective with us. Thank you, Ms. Almonte, for doing the very difficult job of translating. It's not easy, and there's a lot of information. Um, let me turn it over to Griselda from Colombia. And if Griselda, if you could, as much as you're comfortable, tell us a little bit about uh, what brought you here, who did you come with, and whatever elements of those three questions that you think um, you would like to, to, you would like us to hear from you, uh, you just feel comfortable to focus on that. Mi nombre es Griselda, mi familia, vengo con mi familia, mi esposo y mis tres hijos. My name is Griselda. I came here with my family, my husband, and my three kids. Bueno, para nosotros, el llegar a este país, pues es un agradecimiento por habernos acogido. El impedimento que nos detiene a nosotros, o sea, no es un impedimento, sino como una barrera, el no saber el inglés, la otra, la oportunidad de no tener nuestros papeles. 
porque pues para nosotros los colombianos se nos dificulta mucho el permiso de trabajo y el social security. Okay. Um, uh, getting here, we're very grateful for all the help that we received, but one of the biggest barriers besides the language is the immigration component. Um, it's very difficult and it's a long process for us to be able to get a work permit as well as a social security so that we are able to work. Y primero que todo, agradecida con Dios por habernos brindado la oportunidad de llegar aquí a nuestro país con mi familia. Eh, y agradecidos por darnos un techo, una comida, el estudio para mis hijos, en verdad... Es un orgullo para mí porque tengo un niño de 15 años, él venía con un, un nivel de inglés poco de Colombia, pero aquí lo ha favorecido totalmente, ya lo entiende totalmente, perfectamente. Mi niño de 8 años igualmente, entonces en eso me siento orgullosa y quiero estar en ese país para brindarle un futuro a mis hijos, ya que en mi país no se puede, es difícil por muchas circunstancias. Okay. Um, I'm very grateful after getting here that I, you guys were able to provide a roof over my head, uh, food, and also an education. My 15-year-old already had an advanced level of English back in Colombia, and after getting here, his advancement in English is so even better. He's able to speak it out more and understand it more. My eight-year-old is also starting to become a little bit more fluent in English. I'm very grateful because these are opportunities that I did not have back in Colombia. It's very hard and I'm so thankful that I'm able to provide this here for my kids and that we made it here. Uh, I'll give Griselda a moment and maybe Vanessa from Peru can introduce herself to us. Thank you. Buenas tardes con todos. Mi nombre es Vanessa. Soy de Perú. Tengo dos niños y uno por nacer. Mi esposo. Nosotros salimos de Perú el 9 de mayo. Llegamos a Nueva York el 16 de mayo. Good afternoon. My name is Vanessa. I am from Peru. I came here with my husband and two kids, and I have one on the way. Como les comenté, llegué el 16 de mayo a Nueva York. En mis planes no estaba llegar a un Chester, pero la necesidad nos obligó a llegar ahí con mi familia. We left Peru on February 9th. We arrived here in New York City on May 16th. Our initial plan was not ending up in the shelter, but because of all the hardships and difficulties that we faced, we ended up in the shelter system. La cual estamos muy agradecidos por todo ese apoyo que nos brinda el Chester, eh, tanto como los estudios de los niños, eh, la comida y la salud, ¿no? Um, being received in the shelter system, we are very grateful for the food, the education that is being given to our kids, the health, well, we're being provided um, health care for our children and us, and also being able to have a roof over our heads, we are very, very grateful. Mm -hmm. Como mis compañeras están redactando, cada travesía es diferente. Eh, pero nuestra meta siempre fue llegar acá bien y completos, la familia. Just like my, these other ladies here are saying, um, the journey is very different for all of us, but we are grateful that we made it here and that we are healthy and in one piece. El motivo que me dio la esperanza de seguir acá en Nueva York fueron mis hijos, ya que ellos pueden caminar libremente, tranquilamente. The motivation that made me come over here were my kids. They are able to walk around freely. They are able to enjoy uh, certain freedoms. 
en la cual estoy muy agradecida. In, in which I'm very grateful for. Eh, el impedimento que sentimos nosotros los peruanos, eh, eh, enfocada en mi país y también en Colombia, Ecuador. Eh, the difficulties that we from Peru as well as Colombia and Ecuador face. Es sobre lo del tema legal de los papeles, eh, el permiso de trabajo, el social security, que demoramos mucho en obtenerlos. Is the legal pro the legal process of it, uh, the working permit, the legalization, the social security? It's very time consuming. It's a very long process. Sí, porque yo llevo ocho meses acá en Nueva York y recién el día viernes pude someter el permiso de trabajo y aún tengo que seguir esperando. I have already eight months in New York. Um, just last week I was able to submit for my working permit and it's still a waiting process. Para así estar conforme a ley nos pide el país estar nosotros contribuyendo tanto con los taxes, eh, no sé qué más se necesita, pero estamos dispuestos a, a contribuir. A eso venimos, a hacer las cosas bien. We are, we're doing everything we can confining to what the law is explaining us to do. We are, we are willing to pay taxes. We are willing to participate in whatever legal actions we have to, because we, that, that is the reason why we're here. We want to work. We want to contribute. We want to make a better future. Y así sea más fácil, como le dije, para todos, no solamente para los peruanos, para los que ya estamos, para los que están cruzando y para los que sé que aún vienen, porque todos vienen con una historia y un caso atrás. So I, I want to speak on not only us from Peru, but as well as everybody else, for the people that are already here, the people that are on their way here, and for people that are going to make at one point the decision to come over here. We want to work, we want to provide for our families, and we want to do it within the law and with the right way. Eh, por último, doy gracias a todos, especialmente al país por habernos recibido, eh, y más al gobierno por, la, por los Chester que nos brindan, y sé que siguen brindando, y que es una gran ayuda para todas las familias que llegamos sin tener nada acá. I want to thank you all. I want to thank this country. I also want to thank all the shelters who provide the services for a lot of people like, uh, like me that we get here and we have nothing to go on. We're starting from zero and you've been able to give us the opportunity and been able to support us. Sí, venimos a trabajar y a salir adelante por nuestros hijos, todos. We come Los here, inmigrantes. we come here to work and to give a, provide a better future for our kids. That's what our, us immigrants came here to do. Gracias. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Marianne and Ashwin, but mostly thank you, Lucy, Griselda, Vanessa. Thank you, Ms. Almonte, for uh, translating their words for us today. You've done the hardest part of your journey, we hope, which was to arrive here, right? You faced hell and high water to come to New York City, and we really hope, and we will continue to work, we'll go to bed tired, you missed that part of our earlier conversations, <laughs> but we will continue to strive to make sure that people who are coming to New York uh, are able to do what they, what they came here for, which is establish a better life for themselves, for their families, for their children. People came here escaping violence, escaping economic hardship, and we are going to honor the city's legacy of being a sanctuary city, of being a city of immigrants, of being a city that has the highest foreign-born population in the United States. And there's a reason why people come to New York, right? And there's a reason why this group of people is in this room thinking about uh, solutions for problems that precede, precede uh, your arrival here. Uh, New York is facing a, high, a housing crisis that is a problem that existed before. Uh, we saw the new influx of, of migrants. We need to focus on solutions as 
has been uh, discussed over the day that are more upstream. Of course, the emergency shelters are very important. The emergency help is extremely important. It saves lives. It gives people a first place to stay. But we need to think about ways to really helping you and your families uh, stabilize your lives and build your lives here. Thank you very much for sharing your views with us. Uh, for sitting on this panel Thank you all for sharing your journey with us. Hearing the research and then listening to the stories really brings it back home and reminds us of the humanity in our work. Thank you. We are only halfway through and it's been incredible. So time to power up for the afternoon. Please stop, step out in the lobby and fill your plate, then head back right in here to your seat, and we'll get the round table underway.